All right, so what we're doing is we're flaking the, the upright of the wall. This is basically how we do it. We just roll the stuff on. One guy comes behind with the flake. We just dump the flake on the floor. And he just, he just trowels it up the wall. And the flake sticks to the coating. So it's just a little bit of a process. Just got to keep moving. The, the coating's going to want to soak into the wall pretty quick because it's really porous. So the guy rolling doesn't want to get too, too far ahead of the guy with the flake. Otherwise, he's going to have some dry spots. But this is how we do it right here. All right, guys, Mike here. So in this video, I just want to go over the top four reasons why I feel most homeowners will fail at doing an epoxy flake garage coating. And, and this is just my opinion. I just want to put this out there because, you know, we do a lot of these floors and we see a lot of failures. And I really don't want you to waste your money on something that you think is going to look nice when it's just going to fail, you know, a month down the road, six months down the road or the following year. So... The four reasons, one of them, the, the first one is you don't properly evaluate your floor, I feel like. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're a, you're, you bought a house, you're a new homeowner, and, and because you don't, you know, the house might be 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, whatever. And what I mean by the age is how long ago was that floor done? And is there or was there a vapor barrier put under that floor to help keep moisture from coming from the sub base up through the concrete because that moisture comes up as vapor and you can't see it by the time it gets to the surface it usually evaporates unless there's way too much of it and that vapor causes pressure when it's sealed off so what will happen is the moisture vapor will peel off or bubble off or flake off in a, a coating and if you don't really truly understand that process then your coating's going to fail and we see a ton of that and then like cracks and surface damage, how to how to properly fix those, how like like how to address them. What if you see uh, white powdery stuff on the surface? You know what? Do you know what that is? And do you know why it's there? So evaluating the concrete. Do you know if there was a previous coating put on the floor? Is there a is there a clear sealer on the concrete floor that you can't tell is there, but it's there? And how do you know it's there? How do you test for that? And if it is there, like how do you how do you begin to remove that? You can't just paint over it or epoxy over it. Uh, the epoxy coating is not going to bond to that real well. So proper evaluation is key. And honestly, like most homeowners, most DIYers aren't going to know how to do that. And they're just going to think that their floor looks good. I can coat right over it and you know my coating is going to last a long time when really it's just going to fail so that's that's one of the major reasons right there and and one of the second after that you know after you've got it let's say you got it properly evaluated what about preparation now if you look at a lot of these these user friendly DIY friendly or homeowner friendly coatings you can buy off the shelf at at most of these hardware stores you know they're marketed as very user friendly like like you don't have to do a lot of prep is what i feel like and the type of prep they're telling you to do isn't what professionals do you know when when professionals when you hire a professional to come in here and do a coating for you like we're doing here on this this big boathouse like we have to stand behind that coating we have to warranty it like it's not going to peel off it's not just going to flake off and the way we do prep is different than the way they market their prep. So most of their marketing, most of the way they tell you to do prep is just you know, all you need to do is just etch the floor. Well, that's great. So when you etch the floor, what are you doing? You're introducing water or moisture into the floor. They want you to they want you to lightly dampen the floor first and then and then, you know, put this etching solution down that's mixed with water. And then let it etch the surface and then rinse it and rinse it and rinse it off. So you now just introduced a ton of water to your concrete, which, like I just told you, in the valuation process, that moisture has to evaporate. It has to come back up through the concrete and evaporate out the surface. So what's it going to do? You, you coat your floor the next day because the surface looks dry, but yet you still have all this moisture in it that you can't see that's coming out. And your coating flakes off and it peels off and it bubbles and you're wondering why I, I did everything they told me to do. Must be a bad product, right? 
Well, no, it's bad information. No one's educating you on what you really need to do, which is what I'm doing here in my videos. I educate people on the proper way to do this and do it right because I don't want to see you fail. And so evaluating and preparation is key. Like we always grind our floors. And I have, I have the grinding video, actually the preparation video for this floor on a separate video. I'll link at the end of this one so you can see just what we went through, the three of us, what we went through to, to prep this floor. There's, there's quite a bit to it to make sure you do it right. And I just, I put it on a separate video. And then, so one of the other things is, so after your evaluation, after your preparation, is like the what product do you use and you really need to know what good products are and what bad products are in my opinion so we like to use products from professional companies that just aren't generally uh, sold over the shelf so these are distributors who you know they but they buy their products from the manufacturers and you know, we get trained into how to use their products. And then, you know, someone like me can train other people, which is what I do. It's why I have training videos. But using a product with uh, solids in it, a certain amount of solids is really key. And what I find is, you know, um, studying some of these over-the-shelf products is most of their products have uh, what they call 50% solids. So they have, most of them have two parts. You know, they have the hardener, which is one part, and then the resin, which is another part. And, I mean, you might not know the difference between the two, but the hardener is the actual activator. It's what, what makes the, the coating harden up or cure after those two parts get mixed together. But the hardener, most of that hardener evaporates, too, as you, as you roll it out like Luke is doing right now, and it sits on the floor and it starts to cure up. That hardener evaporates, and what you're left with is the solids part of the, the coating. So if you buy a 50% solids coating, you're only getting half left what you rolled out. It's 50% solids. So we like, to, we like to use products that are in the range of you know, 70, 80, 90, or even 100% solids. So what you're putting down in most cases is what you end up with on the floor what you're rolling out there you're going to be left with 70 80 90 percent sometimes even 100 percent of the product left on the floor and that's real key to know that type of stuff a 50 percent solids type of coating is very very thin it's going to end up very thin and in my opinion not very durable at all so you want to try to understand that stuff and then for, as far as so that's three using inferior product that's that's going to cause you a ton of failures right there because you know an inferior product that is probably marketed as real easy to use you have all kinds of time to put it down uh, it rolls out really easy you know all that information that's marketed on the box is going to make you say yeah i can do this you know no it, it sounds like something pretty easy to do so then the fourth major reason that I feel like um, it, you, you're probably going to fail doing this is the application. You know, the way, the way you put the product down is another major reason why a lot of these products fail. And, you know, the beginning stages of that is understanding how to measure it out and how to mix it out. Is your, is your product a one-to-one -one ratio product, meaning... You put down one part of A to one part of B. You mix those two parts together. That could be, you know, one quarter of A part A to one quarter of part B. You can see here I am teaching teaching my students how to do this stuff. Or do you mix, you know, a half gallon of part A to a half gallon of part B? Is it a one to one mixing ratio, or is it a two part mixing ratio, two to one mixing ratio, where you uh, mix two parts of the resin to one part of the hardener? And knowing how to properly mix those together, how long to mix them together. Um, with, with most really good professional products, there's like no dwell time. You, you don't just mix it up and let it sit in a bucket for minutes and minutes and minutes or even a half an hour. <laughs> like, like they're marketed on some of these homeowner friendly things. They're, that's just not how the professional products work. You mix them up. You're ready to go. You know, you dump them on the floor. You got to know what the pot life is. Pot life is, you know, how long can that stuff sit in the bucket after you mix it before it starts to harden up or gel up? And 
you know, for most of the, I can tell you right now, for the products that we use, we don't let them sit in the bucket. We just, we just dump them on the floor. And the longer you let it sit in the bucket, that's generating heat, right? There's a chemical reaction that takes place when you mix the two together. So, and the thicker that stuff is, the hotter that gets. And the stuff starts to set up on you a little bit. So, you know, in most all cases, you're going to want to, like, like ribbon, ribbon that out on the floor when you're spreading it out, whether it's the base coat or the top coat. And then, you know, get that product rolled out the best you can. And there's, what's the methods of like rolling and edging and broadcasting flake and stuff like that? There's, there's, I mean, I'm sure professional guys that do this every day, they all have their the certain methods that they do it, and we do too. You know, generally, generally, you know, Darren's in there mixing product, and then we'll go around, we'll cut in our edges. If we have to go up the wall or just if we're not going up the wall, we'll just cut in the edge of the floor. And then there's Darren right there mixing up some top coat. Um, and then after we cut in our edges, you know, obviously there's a certain amount of square footage we're putting down per gallon of product, you know, and you got to have make sure that's measured out properly. And you want to make sure you only roll out a certain amount in that amount of square footage that you've that you've measured off or you're either you're probably going to get it too thin if you try to stretch it too much so proper rolling proper edging you know and then broadcasting the flake i know a lot of these a lot of these homeowner friendly products they give you like a cup full of flake and you're just kind of you're kind of throwing up a pinch of it and rolling down i i personally i don't like that method i don't think that's enough flake if you're going to do a flake floor i like the full broadcast like this and so the flakes really help I think enhance the color of the floor. I feel like they add durability to the floor. They give you a little bit more texture on the floor if you're worried about it being slippery. And I just feel like after doing hundreds of these, like it's a lot better uh, epoxy garage floor coating if you have a very full broadcast like this. And there's certain things I'm looking for when I broadcast that flake on it to make sure I get a nice even broadcast. Um, there's things like mill thickness that you need to know, you know, how thick is the coating going down and that, that again plays into the how many square feet you got measured out per gallon of product that you're putting down and then top coating it like we're doing here. What's the best type of top coats to use for your garage? Um, what's the methods that you put that top coat down so it goes down and looks nice and even and you don't have roller lines? And you know, obviously, how thick you're going to put it down, how long it's going to last. Do you like a sheen? Do you like matte finishes? So, those are those are the four major reasons why I feel like your coating is probably going to fail if you don't know any of this stuff. Evaluation, preparation, using inferior products, and poor application methods. So, again, I can I can help you with that. I can help teach you that. I have a course. I'll show you. I have a link for it down in the description. But I have a course for that right here, where I where I go through all kinds of jobs like this on the job applications. I teach you all those methods, all the products to use, how to how to put them down, and I help educate you so your floor is not going to fail. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.